rock takes its roots from the black folk music of America, the blues. In the 1950s, American band leaders took the boogie-woogie style of blues and turned it into something acceptable to white audiences, rock and roll. But it was the Brits that ditched the roll and taught the planet how to rock. The clean-cut pop acts of the early 60s sang of holding hands and living dolls, but rebellious teenagers were on the lookout for something edgier and sexier. So bands went back to the blues once more, but this time they played it loud and dirty. In 1964, the Kinks released You Really Got Me. Based upon a loud, overdriven guitar riff, the song is regarded as the first example of hard rock. The Rolling Stones soon followed suit, and with its sexual lyrics, dirty riff, and pounding beat, Satisfaction became a worldwide hit. Hot on the heels of the Stones were the Yardbirds, a band which launched the careers of guitar legends Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, and Jimmy Page. The electric guitar was now the defining sound of rock music, and this spawned a new breed of superstar, the Guitar Hero. During concerts by the supergroup Cream, fans waved banners proclaiming Eric Clapton is God. Ironically, it was following a Cream concert that a young, unknown black American walked onto the stage plugged in his guitar and gave a virtuoso solo performance which announced that Jimi Hendrix, the ultimate guitar hero, had arrived. Hendrix was every inch the rock icon, electrifying on stage, hedonistic off it, as flamboyant as he was talented. Released in 1967, Are You Experienced immediately became one of the most influential albums ever recorded. Hendrix was iconic to the end. Three years later, he was found dead after choking on his own vomit. In 1968, the Yardbirds changed their name to the new Yardbirds. Then, to avoid any confusion with the old Yardbirds, changed their name to Led Zeppelin. They are regarded by many as the first heavy metal band and almost single-handedly created the concept of stadium rock while simultaneously elevating the trashing of hotel rooms to a fine art. By the early 70s, rock was beginning to branch off into different styles. Led Zepp, Deep Purple and Black Sabbath maintained the vanguard of blues-based heavy rock, whilst progressive bands like Pink Floyd, Yes and Genesis explored more complex musical forms. Pink Floyd's seminal 1973 album, The Dark Side of the Moon, sold over 40 million copies worldwide. Meanwhile, a new, poppier, more theatrical style was being popularized by glam rock artists such as David Bowie, T-Rex, Roxy Music and Slade. Out went the macho posturing and phallic guitar thrusting and in came eyeliner for the Bowers. Androgyny and mime. However, by the mid 70s, teenagers were beginning to get a bit disaffected by all this high camp and cleverness. They needed to once again find something subversive and rebellious, a type of band you could join without having gone to music college or art school. So punk came along and gleefully waved two fingers at the establishment. Punk's anti-establishment ethos was in many ways a reaction to Britain's notorious winter of discontent. Elsewhere, things weren't so gloomy. Aussie rock band ACDC celebrated the very essence of rock with titles such as Let There Be Rock and For Those About To Rock, We Salute You. Whilst glam rockers Kiss, wearing their trademark lycra and face paint, sang rock and roll all night in huge stadiums across America. Rock was a party, and everyone was invited. In 1978, Van Halen released their eponymous first album, which was as stripped down and raw as any punk record, and featured Eruption, a piece of solo guitar wizardry that inspired a new style of shredding guitar.
Rock had effectively reinvented itself for the MTV era. Bands like Whitesnake, Bon Jovi and Motley Crue enjoyed massive success on the strength of catchy hit singles, expensive music videos and big hair. Rock may have been enjoying mainstream success in the 80s, but it also seemed to be losing its edge by becoming too slick and overproduced. It was time to go back to basics again, and in 1985 the bands Hollywood Rose and LA Guns merged to form Guns N' Roses. Their 1987 album Appetite for Destruction featured hard-rocking guitar riffs, long Jimmy Page-inspired solos, and anthemic choruses proving that rock music will always remain true to its roots. <laughs> 